And that's why mm-hmm. I wrote the article and why I think it's, it's dangerous because it turns out that, yeah, to his credit as a writer or as a marketer, if you will, Richard Dawkins has, has been phenomenally successful in the last few decades at actually spreading not just one, but uh, two um, different myths that form um, some of the foundation of the destructive elements of our Western worldview. And so one of those is this one that we've been talking about, of nature as a machine. Um, and he, I mean, he actually has said, thing, he's actually written things like, um, life is just bites and bites and bites of digital information. And he even goes on to say, that is not a metaphor, it is the plain truth. It couldn't be any plainer if it were raining floppy disks. So yeah. he doesn't just sort of say, hey, this is a useful metaphor. He actually <laughs> tries to say, this is the universe that he's describing. Um, so that's one issue. But then, um, mm-hmm. perhaps even more importantly, you know, he became famous through writing this book, The Selfish Gene. And the selfish gene is this notion that actually you can explain all of evolution, um, again, by breaking it down to the smallest particle which is the gene, which is a, a replicating instrument. And um, that evolution can be explained by genes that have this need to re- replicate themselves no matter what. And organisms themselves are really just these kind of lumbering vehicles through which genes replicate themselves. And it's kind of a powerful idea, but it's been shown right. in recent decades in by you know, further advances in biology to be um, very limited in its explanatory capability. And when you try to turn it into an overall theory of evolution, it's just plain wrong. Because actually evolution works at multiple levels. It works at the level of the gene, um, the level of the um, actual genetic expression uh, within within the cell. It works at the level of, of the organism and communities of organisms and e- ecosystems. And there are many far more uh, sophisticated uh, theories at this point that recognize that the way to understand evolution is how these different levels of evolution interact and interconnect. Um, so but this is not just a biological argument. The point is that uh, people, uh, non-biologists, have taken these ideas and they've created these kind of pseudoscientific rationalizations for uh, neoliberal capitalism. And so you can take the selfish gene notion and apply that to yeah. our economy and say, well, you know, um, the economy works efficiently by, again, each person is like the selfish gene, but it's a selfish agent doing what they do best. And that's, that's how we evolve the most, the optimal society. Um, and people have done exactly that. Uh, you, you even, you may remember the Enron scandal, uh, from some years back. This, a completely pathological company that was um, based on um, just basically um, like essentially just lying and trying to make use of capital markets to uh, create billionaires out of the founders and really rip off the um, everybody else. And the CEO, uh, Jeffrey Skilling, his Bible basically was the selfish gene. Yeah, and, and of course... You know, he misinterpreted the selfish gene. I'm not in any right. case, in any way arguing that Richard Dawkins would um, e- either endorse that kind of behavior or even that a, a true interpretation of even his own ideas would lead to that kind of way of thinking. But the, the thing is that it creates this way of looking sure. at, the, at the universe, which then people apply to economics, which then people create these moral justifications uh, to uh, basically look at exploitation as being some sort of law of nature. 